In the Northern Cape, vital state-run psychiatric health care services are limited to just one hospital in Kimberley. It's a multi-billion rand facility that promised to provide care to patients with mental health issues. We were there in 2019 when the hospital finally opened its doors, welcoming hundreds of patients from around the province. Just five years later, information provided to us on the facility's alleged decline couldn't be ignored. Not in a country with a dark history of failing psychiatric patients and those living with disabilities. Here's Erin. It was the early 2000s in the Northern Cape. Veronica Kassa, a court interpreter, received an alarming call from her eight-year-old son's school. There was a complaint from the teacher who said he is daydreaming. So eventually they arranged a um, assessment with the Department of Education where they had said that they must change schools. With time, her son's daydreaming became hallucinations and he often turned violent. Veronica supported him as much as she could, but as he got older, his needs grew and she realized he needed medical help. At the time, there was only one small, understaffed psychiatric facility in Kimberley, servicing the vast Northern Cape. So when the government began work on a large and modern psychiatric hospital, Veronica considered it a godsend. The hospital would serve a large area with outpatient access, general psychiatric care, a forensic unit for accused people awaiting trial and a section for criminals who can't be convicted due to mental health reasons. I was impressed. I was like, OK, so our kids are going to be assisted. But her joy was short-lived. Construction limped along for 13 years and a 290 million rand budget ballooned to about 2 billion rand. This is the story of what's become of that hospital and what it says about a province grappling with corruption and mismanagement. It's about how people in the greatest need are paying the price. About a decade ago, Carte Blanche first reported on the Kimberley Mental Health Hospital. Provincial politics severely affects the plight of psychiatric patients. In 2011, Carte Blanche exposed... It was among many projects in the tenure of then Public Works MEC John Block, who was jailed in 2016 for corruption and money laundering in an unrelated case. We reported how this grandiose construction was more than a decade late and how, when it officially opened in 2019, it had been through four contractors and multiple lawsuits, costing seven times more than planned. This hospital also stands as a monument of corruption. Very good, now welcome to Kimberley. Freelance journalist and author Charnay Kemp has been reporting on the provincial health department and its hospitals for years. Do you think it's fair to say that it's been hounded by controversy both before the doors opened and once they actually did? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, after it opened, the DA went on an oversight visit and the leader then said the hospital is filled with emptiness. And it was a very apt description because even though it looked very good, nothing happened there. Oddly, Shanae and her colleagues have been given little, if any, access to the facility. They're not very transparent about the services and the, the success stories that come out of that hospital. We haven't heard of any. But we have undercover evidence of what they appear to be hiding. The health department in the Northern Cape has a terrible track record when it comes to government expenditure. And their mental health hospital in Kimberley has been a big hole since its build. But now staff and patients are at risk. We were contacted by whistleblowers in January. Wanting to hide their identity, they described a facility so mismanaged that staff can no longer guarantee the care or safety of patients. You decided to speak out and expose the hospital. Why? I feel that it's very, very that people must suffer 
En pas jy ente moet bly in stilte hagel konstander jy dit. Ek kon nie meer stil bly nie. Ek moes praat. Wat is die probleme by die hospitaal? Van verlede jaar oktober af het sit ons met geen krag nie. Die apteek moes skuif van die hospitaal af na die ander hospitaal toe omdat die elektriciteit af is, die medikasie het verval. Dit heb jy op my toos. Substations supplying power to the building haven't been repaired after being vandalized. Even a substation on the hospital grounds. It's been out of order since October, with only two small and insufficient generators as backup. There is no a working washkamer for the patient. It's a full washroom. I was now in a stadium where I sell washpuder for my patient. So I wash the clothes with my hand. We understand the lack of power means toilets can't flush as the sewage system is electrical. I've been trying to use the toilets there. They're very much uncomfortable. It's a dark, dirty toilet. That is not a place for a human being, especially who has rights like that one of mine. But the hospital's operational costs are well budgeted for. The funds are just being mismanaged. We obtained proof of numerous inflated payments, and it seems intermediaries added a hefty markup after acquiring the tenders. Afraid for his job and life, we met another insider who echoed what the other whistleblower told us. I want to show you something that Carte Blanche got from a source. This is a golf cart. What do you know about it? This is something that I've seen in the hospital. I can't it professor. The golf cart is used to shuttle people from the gate to the hospital entrance. What would you say if I told you the Department of Health paid around 500,000 rand for that six-seater? That's mal, that's paie mal. I can not glo nie. That's the evidence we have. And it's sitting at your hospital? I glo nie. <laughs> if this cart was bought directly from the supplier, it would cost around 250,000 rand at most. Not half a million. Die hospital is kook warm. Onze patiënte eet koue kos. Hulle was in koue water. Die hospital is flinders. Ons noem dit die shanty. Lord, in die wachheid. Amen. Amen, manne. Lekker eet. We had more evidence. A source also showed us this vehicle. Dit is een koot bike. Bingo, it's a quad bike that's been bought by the Department of Health for a mental health hospital in the Northern Cape. Please help me understand. I get to see a laundry aid worker. Rene, the quad bike, not around. He rides not around for liquor. With the trailer with laundry on the back. No, I said not for The quad was bought for 140,000 rand. Its website lists it at 40,000 rand. While apparently able to afford a golf cart and a quad bike with a substantial markup, the hospital is failing at its primary task, patient care. As a nurse, our whistleblower looks after the daily needs of patients. So we at Carte Blanche have proof of a linen order. Did you see any evidence of that order being delivered? No, I have no knowledge of it. When it was delivered, then it must be in the hospital today. Elke bed het een laken, nie eens een kompeers of een kissingsloopie. However, our evidence shows an order placed in 2022 and another in 2023. From the one order's payment details, it's unclear what the cost breakdown was or even how many patients were purchased for. But working on the hospital's current capacity of around 170 patients and assuming they received either pyjamas or linen, both would have cost 5,000 rand per set. That's right, 5,000 rand for pyjamas or a set of blankets and sheets. But there was worse to come. Onze patiënt is te veel gedaan als slange. Pofaders, pofaders. Dat lijkt zo oerwoud bij de hospitaal. The fence that surrounds the high security section that houses potentially violent state patients has been breached. Die draad is nu zo afgeschort. Maar die patiënten draad op regen om uit te slaan. Ons is een gevaar. Die dieren is van stijl om te sluit. Maar omdat daar niet kracht te voeren is, staan die dieren op. So die patiënten toegang tot ons, toegang om weg te haal, 
تو تو هم ام یوته بسیر اینو دو حالا ویت از علف اونز بسیر حالا کم نکس اوری فن حالا از نسته از اسپیتال ما وقت فن می سو پشه این ای پریت دی دیر از اوپ این ستیک فن می وقت فن می کنر نکس از امتی نت خدونی دید از نو نو نیت سو ستکن Under the circumstances, it's amazing more staff haven't quit. Some stay for the paycheck, others refuse to abandon their duties. But what about the patients? They have nowhere to go. To Charnay, the allegations leveled against the hospital are inexcusable. The Department of Health must take responsibility for that hospital and their other hospitals. Amazingly, both the head of department and the CEO of the hospital have agreed to talk to us, so we're on our way there now. Albert Lynx has been CEO since 2019. He says security now patrols the facility day and night to prevent cable thieves from targeting the on-site substation. When we put the inflated payments of the quad bike, the golf cart, and the missing linen to him, he told us his hands are tied, and that the CEO's job stops after acquiring items from the health department. So are you saying you can't do the things you want to do to fix this hospital? We do not, in my space as a CEO, administer supply chain. You virtually have to rely on your counterparts in the provincial administration. You do a requisition and you depend on turnaround from, from them. But an expert in the sector told us a CEO is responsible for overseeing the hospital budget, whether in charge of procurement or not, adding that a CEO at the very least should query or report suspicious payments. Acting HOD for the health department, Mkolisi Mlata, was appointed in December because the incumbent is facing fraud charges. We understand from sources that there are a number of issues that are making it impossible for your nurses and your doctors here to fulfill their Hippocratic Oath. That's your mandate. Yes. What do you say? Look, uh, we're dealing with the problems, but importantly, what, what uh, you must take into account. Here we're being impacted what we call the social determinants of health, things beyond us, things beyond our man mandate. He mentions the power issue as an example and how the department apparently invested extensively in electricity provision. However, we learned from our insiders that the hospital would be cast into darkness for days on end because the generators ran out of fuel. We also asked him about the inflated payments. Your own Premier, Zamani Sol, said at the opening of this hospital in 2019 that it was a monument of corruption so I'm asking you pointedly, has it just changed shape? I, the I've, corruption, the kickbacks, the problems? We have a process of getting to the bottom of the allegations uh, that uh, uh, are being made. We are determined to get to the bottom of this. And where there must be consequences, uh, there will be consequences. But the promises provide little solace to patients and staff bearing the brunt of government's inaction and apparent indifference. The government is failing me and other mothers out there. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.